Hello and welcome to the Thursday, April 18th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Washington, D.C. In Diaries today, we got a neat, malicious PDF uh, that uh, Xavier took apart and he explains a little bit about how these type of PDFs work. You probably have seen it. It looks like a blurred document with a clickable button and then once you click on the button it will download the malicious file in this case a zip file that turns out to be agent tesla xavier explains how to identify the url that you're actually been clicking on and also how this annotation feature works that attackers are taking advantage here of in order to create these particular pdfs the reason behind these PDFs is twofold. First of all, the PDF itself is not really malicious. It just includes a link to this malicious uh, file. Secondly, by using a PDF instead of doing this, for example, as an HTML email, the particular attack looks more plausible for user to click on and also is somewhat more difficult to identify for various defensive software. And then just a quick update here on the Palo Alto issue. Palo Alto now states that disabling telemetry is no longer considered sufficient in order to block the attacks. Palo Alto did come up with new threat prevention rules, but in order to apply them, you do need to subscribe to the threat preventions uh, for your particular system. The patch works. It's really just the mitigation of turning off telemetry that is no longer considered sufficient. And it sort of makes sense if you think about it that the directory traversal in the cookie, in the session ID, really allows an attacker to write arbitrary files to the file system the telemetry was then just used to execute the content of the file. So there are likely other places where an attacker could create a file that will then be executed. Something like a cron directory or something like this may work. Or maybe just uh, by overriding, for example, a configuration file, an attacker may, for example, gain access uh, to the particular uh, VPN server. And when I talked about the XCUtil backdoor and how it sort of uh, came into place, I told you that, well, this is sort of a playbook we really need to look for of attackers attempting to inject code into uh, open source projects by putting pressure on maintainers uh, to update more frequently, faster, and making new untrusted individuals maintainers of the project. Uh, the Open Source Security Foundation now published a blog post stating that the number of such attacks were observed against some JavaScript related uh, pro projects. Uh, this was made public also by the OpenJS Foundation, which manages many of these JavaScript uh, projects. The same pattern was observed here where you have individuals that are contributing code that is initially benign, but then a lot of pressure is put on maintainers to quickly merge the code. There are other accounts that are then jumping in. None of these accounts has sort of any history outside of the project, but uh, they're basically sort of coordinating this effort to support a particular individual to be then made maintainer of the project. In this case, the attack didn't appear to work, at least as far as they're saying. None of these individuals were actually made a maintainer, but definitely something to watch out for if you are maintaining a significant open source project. And Microsoft is observing attacks against open metadata. This is a system typically run inside a container that catalogs metadata across an organization. A month ago, a number of critical vulnerabilities were patched in this metadata service. And what Microsoft is now seeing attacks against uh, containers that are hosting open metadata. 
These attacks that Microsoft has seen are installing crypto coin miners, so it doesn't look like they're actually after any data or modifying any data processed uh, by uh, these uh, containers, but still something that you want to get ahead of and make sure that you have your systems patched. And Microsoft's blog has plenty of details about how the attack exactly works and how to identify if your instance is affected. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.